In the last lecture, we learned what is the downside of subscribing to a state. So, for example, if I go to VS Code, here we have our counter state. And to this counter state, we have two components, which is subscribing to it. First, we have this custom input component, which is subscribing to that observable, which will be returned by the store for this state. So, whenever the counter state will change, we are executing this callback function inside custom input component. Then we also have this counter value component, which is subscribing to this state. So here you can see, we have also subscribed to the state, which will be returned in the observable by the store. So here also we are subscribing to the same state. So whenever anything in this counter state will change, the store is going to emit an observable. We are subscribing to that observable and we are executing this callback function whenever this counter state changes. Now here in this counter value component from this counter state, we are only interested in counter property value. And in this custom input component, we are only interested in toggle property value of the counter state. But what will happen is even if the counter value changes, still this callback function will be executed. And in the counter value component where we are interested in counter property value in the counter state, if the toggle value changes in that case also, this callback function will be called. And if we have subscribed to this counter state in multiple components, then the callback function associated to that subscription will be called for all those components. And it is going to affect the performance of the application. Another problem here is if you see, since we are subscribing to this counter state in multiple places, we are subscribing it here in the counter value component and we are subscribing to it in the custom input component. So there we are passing the name of this state as a string value. Now in the app component, if I go ahead and if I change this name to something else for now, let's say X and if we save the changes and if we go to the terminal, you will see that the application has compiled successfully. But let's go to our application now and let me open developer console. And here you see, we have this error cannot read properties of undefined reading counter because now since we have changed the name of the state to X, the counter is not known in this custom input component. So this counter is not known. This counter is also not known. And here also this counter is not known. So let's go back to app module.ts file and let's bring back the counter name. Okay. So here, if we change the name, we are not getting any error here where we are passing that state name to this select method and also in the custom input component where we are passing this state name as a string value to the select method. So this is another disadvantage. If we change the name in the app module, first we will have to go to each component where we have subscribed to that state and there we will have to change the name. But both of these issues we can overcome with the help of feature selector concept in NGRX. In NGRX, a feature selector is a pure function used to select a top level slice of state that belongs to a specific feature of your application. And NGRX applications are often used around features like users, products, orders, etc. Now, if this statement does not make any sense right now, let's understand this practically. So let's go back to VS Code. And for now, let me close these files. I'll keep this state file open. And what I'll do is in this state folder, I'll create a new file and I'll call this file as counter selector.ts okay inside this file what we are going to do is first we are going to create a feature selector so for that we are going to use this create feature selector method and in order to use this create feature selector method we need to import it from ngrx store and to this create feature selector method we need to pass a state for which we want to create a feature selector here i'm going to pass the state as counter so here i'm passing the state name and if you remember this counter state, it is pointing to this state. So I'm passing that state to this create feature selector function. And here this create feature selector is a generic function. So we also need to specify the type. The type here is going to be 
counter state. So if you remember, this state is of type counter state. So I'm specifying the type and this is going to return us a selector. What I'm going to do is I'm going to store it in a variable and I'm going to call it as get counter state. Now, from this feature selector, so here, as I mentioned, it is going to return us a feature selector with this state. From this feature selector, we want to create individual selectors for this counter and for this toggle. So again, here I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it as get counter. Okay. And now we are going to use another method called create selector. This time we are not creating a feature selector. We are creating a selector. And what selector are we creating? So to this create selector method, we need to pass our feature selector, which in this case is get counter state. Okay. And as the second argument, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function, it is going to receive the state, the current state, which we are passing to the feature selector. So whatever will be the current state of this counter state, that will be passed to the state property, to the state parameter. And from there, we are going to simply return. So this state, we know that it is going to be an object where we will have the counter property and the toggle property. So from this selector, I want to return the value of counter property. Okay. So here we created a feature selector where we have the entire state. Now here we are creating a single selector where instead of having entire state, we are going to return the current value of one of these states, right? We are getting the current state here. And from that, we are reading the value of counter property. We are reading the current value of the counter property and we are returning it from this selector. In the same way, let's also go ahead and let's create a selector for toggle. So here I'm going to call it as get toggle. And here we want to return the current value of toggle property of the counter state. Okay. And again, in order to create this selector, what we are doing, we are passing the feature state. And as the second argument, we are passing a callback function, which is going to receive the current state. And from there, we are reading the value of the toggle and then we are returning it. So in this way, we have created our selectors. So now wherever I want to use the value of this counter property of this counter state there, I can use this get counter selector and wherever I want to use the value of toggle of the counter state there, I can use this get toggle selector. So let's go to our component. So let's first go to counter value component. And there now, instead of subscribing to the state directly, what we are going to do is we are going to subscribe to the selector. So here we are going to subscribe to get counter selector. And from the selector file, we also need to export them if we want to use it outside of this file. So let's also export them. Let's save the changes. And now let's try to access get counter selector. And to use this get counter selector, we also need to import it from this file. Okay, now what this get counter selector is going to return us, it is going to return us the value of the counter property. So it is going to return us a numeric value. It is not going to return us an object. So now it is not going to return us this entire state. Instead, it is going to return us the value of the counter property of the counter state. So here in the data, we are going to receive that value. So we can directly assign that value to the counter property of this counter value component like this or here I can also call it as counter or maybe count I'll call it and here we'll specify count. Let's save the changes and now in the custom input component there again instead of subscribing to the counter state now we are going to subscribe to get toggle selector and to use this get toggle selector, we also need to import it. And this get toggle selector, it is going to return us a Boolean value. So this observable, 
this select method is still going to return us an observable but that observable is going to return us a boolean value here in the counter value component this select method it is still going to return us an observable but in that observable it is going to emit a numeric data okay so here we are going to receive a boolean value let me simply call it as toggle and to this show custom input now we are going to assign the value which we have received for this toggle parameter with this let's save the changes let's go to our application and now let me open developer console and for the first time when the page is loading for the first time both counter observable will be called and toggle observable will be called so this is fine now let me clear the console here now if i click on this increment decrement or reset button it should only call the callback function from counter value component so that means it should only call this function okay so let's see that so when i click on this increment button you see we only see one message counter observable called if i click on decrement button then also we only see counter observable called and now let me increment the value one more time and when i click on this reset button in that case also the counter observable is getting called so this is fine now let me clear the console and now when i click on this plus button in that case it should call only this callback function which we are writing inside the custom input component so in the console we should only see the message toggle observable called we should not see the message counter observable called so if i go back and if i click on this plus button it should expand the custom input and here we are seeing the message toggle observable called so it is only logging toggle observable called so in this way with the help of selector which we have created here we can only subscribe to those properties of the state for which we need the current value in the component so we don't need to subscribe to the entire state instead we can subscribe to only those state properties which we want in that component and with this it makes sure that the performance is not compromised because in this case when a state property changes only those components will be notified about the change which is using that property and also another thing which you will see here is now when we have subscribed to a selector here we are not passing any string value so if we misspell something or if we provide a wrong name then we will get an error at compile time and also if the name of the state changes so for example in the app module if we change the name of this state from counter to something else we will only have to update it at one place and that is in the counter selector file where we are passing that state name in order to create the feature selector i hope these points are clear so this is the use of a selector in an ngrx application this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day